Okay, so 101 knee, we would start by looking through the quadriceps tendon, moving from medial to lateral, and you can see it's multi-pennate. And then a good picture is not showing an isotropy like that, it's with the surface parallel with the top of the screen. And what we're going to do is slowly extend the knee out and then flex it up under the table. And this pushes any excess fluid and effusion that's inside the knee up into that suprapatellar recess. So you can see it squelching out there. And quite often what's helpful is we trapezoid or wide scan. And on a larger knee, we might need a 12-5 probe. So you can see the cartilage of the femur when it, and that's extending back out. So you can see how there's white, black, white, black, white in the tendon. That's because you've got all four quadriceps muscles coming down and inserting into that one tendon. So only just go back to neutral, don't, don't go back too far. One more time. And then obviously we do that in transverse as well down on that tendon there's the insertion onto the patella but obviously those fibers keep going so in most series we would include maybe two longs and one transverse like that looking for spurs in the tendon uh, and then obviously deep to the tendon we can see the fluid in the knee that's probably a normal amount of knee joint fluid there you can angle it medially and laterally and this is also the position you do um, knee joint injections for so obviously if we run up more proximally, we're seeing vastus intermedialis down deep. We're seeing rectus femoris overlying and we're seeing vastus medialis, vastus lateralis over there. And so after quadriceps tendon, we move over the patella down onto the patella tendon. So we'll have a look at the patella tendon proximally from medial to lateral and then we come down onto the tibial tuberosity and we can assess that medial to lateral. Patella tendon can be a separate assessment all on its own um, so we'd normally document that and that and also a transverse image of the patella tendon so there's the proximal coming down to the distal and then if we reset so that we've got more depth, we can look down into the anterior knee joint. And at this point, we can also do a dynamic assessment. Okay, so then I've moved on to a 12-5 probe. We can extend the knee and flex down to, yep, and extend one more time. So we do this for two reasons. You're looking for an effusion and any accessory ossicles. You can see how the femur is shown. You can see the end of the femur now in that extended knee position. And we also look at um, the retinaculum off to the sides of our patella. So here's the retinaculum laterally and the retinaculum medially. And we watch the fat pad dynamically. So if you extend the knee you can see there should just be a slight little bulge but no clicks and pops and we shouldn't have that fat pad displacing and clicking um, which is a fat pad impingement so this is the lateral retinaculum you can see the fat behind the patella tendon slides out that's quite normal for that to happen and that's the patella tendon assessment and then we can move on to the medial knee so So from that patella tendon, what we do is slide around and identify the joint line. So here's the joint line, here's the distal femur, and this is the medial tibial plateau. Keep going, keep going. And the first structure that we fall onto is our medial collateral ligament. MCL is much easier to see when the knee is actually bent. So the proximal end is where we normally assess um, the measurement and compare with the other side, that's where you get your strain injuries. There's the medial meniscus, it should be flush with the joint. 
and here's the distal medial collateral ligament. You can From this position, it's easier to move on to the pes anterine tendon, so we rotate the anterior, um, anteriorly and oblique the camera slightly, and this is our pes anterine tendon seen here. So you're looking for pes anterine bursitis in this position, and often we just clinically assess it as well just to see if it's tender. Okay, if we head back to the patella tendon, we're going to now assess the lateral joint or the lateral collateral ligament. So from here we slide around the knee and instead of the LCL tendon being the first thing that we land on, the first thing that we land on is actually the iliotibial band. So you can see that this um, transducer frequency is slightly too low for this assessment, but this is the ITB insertion here. So I'm going to swap cameras. It's good to keep the top of the camera just on the patella as you slide around. So you'll see nothing for a while until you hit femur. And then there's the joint line. So we can see meniscus. Um, but the first tenderness looking thing we've come across is the iliotibial band. So to get a good image, you can see we have to oblique backwards slightly. Hold it with this hand as well. Let's see which one's better. Um, but that's the ITB over the top. And then to get the LCL, we keep sliding around posteriorly. The joint space appears wide and then it narrows down. And then you keep going. And this is the incorrect angle to see it. So what we actually need to do is oblique the lower end of your camera posteriorly. And we can see the proximal LCL there. It's sort of then a bit scooped. And then as you follow it distally, there it is there. And it appears quite complicated because it's surrounded by some other structures, so like the biceps femoris insertion. Let me just, I'll just jump onto the other knee. So that uh, LCL, we're going to go from patella tendon, sliding around, around, around. And then you can see the ITB at the very top. Zoom in. So this is ITB here, and that at this level it's crossing over your lateral femoral condyle. So we would run up and transverse as well, and you see it there spreading out. And at this point here is where you sometimes get bursitis deep to the ITB. So again, we could perform a dynamic assessment, um, having a look at that ITB sliding over the top. There. Um, and then obviously to get LCL, we go back into the long, there's ITB, keep sliding around, and there's your LCL, and we have to angle posteriorly. So this is the proximal LCL here, this is popliteus deep to that, which can look like it's part of the same structure, and then here's LCL distally. Posterior assessment, come down the lateral side and then we go down the medial side and when we're on the medial aspect we can see semi-membranosus here and semi-tendinosus on top so we're just going to straighten the knee out, relax down a little, just optimise this image. So an important thing with knees obviously is to look for Baker's cyst so you identify the semi-tendinosus overlying this big round semimembranosus muscle. And this is the location for Baker's cyst. A bit more laterally, we've got the popliteal vein, which is already in two, and there's the popliteal artery. Um, so part of a knee assessment is to also look for a DVT. So at this point, we would compress just to make sure um, that they're not Baker's cyst, that they're actually veins. Come back to your medial side, we take uh, an image and transverse and then long, so this is your semimembranosus insertion. Um, we'd probably do that as a separate assessment like